fracking for gas on UK soil. A divisive subject fraught with uncertainty. I think we could have another go, but I don't know if we will. So it's a guessing game? At the moment, it's very much a guessing game. The American-style shale gas revolution never quite materialised over here. And three years ago, amid earthquakes and opposition, drilling was banned. We are not able to get it out of the ground in a way that is safe, in a way that is not hugely disruptive. But Russia's invasion of Ukraine is driving an energy crisis. UK gas prices are astronomically high. And energy security is top of the agenda. We will be using gas for a very long time yet. If we have it here, under our feet, then for heaven's sake, let's use that. So now the government is thinking again on fracking. Is it worth the risk or is it a dead end? It's the wrong place, it's the wrong time and it's the wrong direction. It's ridiculous. So you can see the flare stack and the um, the exterior fence. And the site itself? Yeah. Yeah, it's just there. When it was flaring, you could actually see the the glow and the, the smoke coming out of the mm. flare stack. Could you? Yeah. yeah. When they were drilling, we could hear the drilling. Mm. Yeah. And that was like a constant whine. Chris and Susan Holliday live in Little Plumpton Village in Lancashire. Their house is nearly opposite what was the Preston New Road drill site an exploratory fracking project run by a company called Quadrilla to test the flow of the shale gas deep underground here up to the surface. But fracking can cause seismic activity and in 2019 that's just what happened, an earthquake measuring 2.9 on the Richter scale. We were in the kitchen and uh, when it happened, we, you know, literally the uh, crockery in the cupboards was, rat was rattling, windows were shaking. I, I was cleaning and there was a bang. It's very unsettling, it's very unnerving um, and you're very, very concerning that you, you're living with this and in our case just 500 or so metres away from our homes. Do we want to have any fracking anywhere? No! For the many who had protested against the drilling, that earthquake was proof of a potentially dangerous industry gaining a foothold in the UK. The government already spooked by a series of smaller tremors in previous months and years, suspended fracking indefinitely. It felt like a victory to Barbara Richardson. She'd spent years as a member of a group called The Nanas, even attracting celebrity support from the likes of actor Emma Thompson. It was hard because at first people wouldn't listen to us. You know, people thought, load of activity, you know, and we were called all sorts, green blobs, protesters, you know, green, all the insults that people, we're just normal people who saw the damage that this industry would do and felt we had to challenge that. What got you going? The, the injustice of it, really, at the end of the day, the fact that, that the industry wants to force this on communities and it's not right. But a lot has changed from a few years ago when the decision was made to stop exploring for shale gas. Now, there's an energy crisis. The prices consumers are paying are soaring and the government wants us to increase our energy security. And so despite all the disruption and community opposition to sites like this, that includes asking scientists to take another look at fracking. So this is a, a drift mine. Professor Peter Stiles is one of the country's leading geologists. He specialises in monitoring seismic activity and has advised the government on fracking and when work should be stopped. Wow. Coal was removed above us. In an old mine near Stoke-on-Trent, he explains why the legacy of coal makes drilling for gas even deeper underground a real challenge. Why does the existence of coal mines matter to fracking. Any fractures which we see here will also be present in the shale beneath. And in lots of parts of the UK, the coals above that shale have been worked. If you disturb the Boland shale, how are you going to affect all of the coal mines which lie above them? And in parts of Yorkshire and Lancashire, probably about 50% of the area which is occupied by the Boland shale has coal mines above it. 
And so there's I've, no way of avoiding the coal mines if you're going to frack meaningfully. It's quite difficult. The geology of the UK is extremely complex. Despite these concerns, he thinks the government may have been too cautious when it stopped the fracking industry in its tracks three years ago. An earthquake between one and two on the Richter scale, is there a real life equivalent that people could imagine? Your windows rattle, right? It, it, it's, not, it, you, there's no, there's, it's not a damaging event. The issue was um, public, public dis, disquiet with the effects of having experienced an earthquake that was created by an activity that they were not used to. If you go to Japan, nobody, nobody gets out of bed for a magnitude 2 earthquake, but that's part of their environment. It's not part of ours. The government's ordered a review into fracking. Yes. Three years after, they essentially stopped it. Yes. Is that a reasonable thing to do, in your view? I think it is, yes. It, it, may, not, it may not work out that it's a, it, it, it's a plausible source of energy, but um, we have a lot more data. We can look elsewhere. I think we should, we should try to understand it. I think we could have another go, but I don't know if we will. We're at Mantor in Derbyshire, um, and this is Carboniferous Rock. Uh, it was laid down about 300 million years ago. Petrophysicist Paul Glover takes us to see a rare example of exposed shale to explain what having another go would actually involve. You drill down to the, the, the level you want to drill down to, and then you add into the well, at high pressures, a fluid that is mixed with particles. The, raising the pressure on the fluid is what fractures the rock at depth. The particles stay behind and jack the, uh, the fracture open. And then gas can flow around those particles through the fractures and out to the surface. It's that process that can cause tremors and earthquakes. If fracking were to restart, the majority of activity would happen in the north of England, home to what's known as the Boland Shale Formation. It covers a huge swathe of ground from coast to coast, from the Atlantic coast all the way over to the North Sea, from northern Derbyshire here right up to Northumberland at about a thousand metres depth. So very deep underground. Very deep underground but indeed. But spread over a vast area. But there, the certainty ends. Everyone agrees that the Boland Shale Formation is huge. But what's much less clear is how much gas is actually down there, the quality of that gas, and whether or not it can even be extracted. And it's going to be really hard to answer those questions until drilling gets underway. And that, say campaigners, would be a disaster for climate change at the very moment we should be accelerating investment in clean energy. But Quadrilla CEO Francis Egan points out that even the most ambitious climate targets include using gas for decades to come. The shale gas industry in the, U in the UK has been frankly demonised. We have complied with every regulation, we have followed government policy, we are trying to uh, extract uh, a product that everybody in this country, everybody virtually uses. The claims that it's unsafe, if that's unsafe, then construction's unsafe. Mining's unsafe and geothermal is certainly unsafe. So either one rule applies to all of them, the same rules, or if the government wants to shut it down on the grounds it's unsafe, it better shut down the construction industry in the country. What constitutes safe is far from the only area of disagreement. Above all, fracking has become a deeply political issue, not just between the parties, but within the Conservatives too. And at the heart of the argument is a calculation. Is it worth the risk? You know, Quadrilla cannot operate within the traffic light system. When Mark Menzies, whose Lancashire constituency filed, bore the brunt of the first attempts at drilling, has had enough of the fracking industry. I'm afraid they've lost their licence to operate as far as I'm concerned. You don't trust them? I certainly don't trust them, no. The government would be absolutely, you know, wrong-headed to think that Press New Roads could be, you know, given the green light again. Two national moratoriums speak volumes. Intertwined with the politics is the issue of cost. Energy economist Dieter Helm warns that unlike America and its booming shale gas industry, fracking here doesn't really add up. If you go to the United States, you've got wide open plains very low population density, uniform rock structures, so no real problem. Here in the UK, 
look at the geography. You know, look down at how densely populated this country is. Look at the complexity of the geology. Think about what's involved in getting the stuff out and getting it to market. It's whether it's economic, sensible, and in a complex uh, situation like the UK, whether it makes local environmental sense too. And my guess is the answer is probably not. But many disagree. We're going to need oil and gas for the next 20 to 30 years at least, and possibly longer. The only question then is, are we going to be getting it from our, under our own feet, which is what fracking is all about, or are we going to be getting it from abroad, importing it from places like Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and heaven forbid, Russia? If we're doing that, what's happening is that we are shipping away all the opportunity that comes from the oil and gas industry to other places and paying their taxes. Yeah. Craig McKinley is chair of the Net Zero Scrutiny Group, a collection of Conservative MPs pushing back against the government's climate targets. With shale gas extraction would come a lot of investment, a lot of jobs, a nice lot of tax revenue for the Treasury, we need that. There won't be any government money, this will be private money, private businesses, uh, you know, big corporates. If it works, it works, good luck to them. If it doesn't, they've made an investment that, that's failed. I don't see any downside for the British public, only an upside if it works. As the pressure from backbenchers builds, the government says it wants to be led by the science on fracking and won't lift the moratorium unless it is shown to be safe, sustainable and of minimal disturbance to those living nearby. As the British Geological Survey finalises its review on these issues, the government will have to decide on whether to give an industry with a controversial history and an uncertain future another chance. Hannah Thomas-Peter, Sky News.